Josh Lambeau now ready to put this one in the air. And off we go from Jacksonville. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback, a product of NC State. It's Jacoby Brissett. sometimes is predicated on the ageless wonder, Frank Gore. And he wants to be a guy with limitless carries. Frank Gore gets better and better with each carry, really batters defenses with his inside running. So second and 10 here. Carry here for Frank Gore. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. And we take you through the starting defense for Jacksonville. Jalen Ramsey was the fifth overall pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, and he more than lived up to the hype. Many people were wondering, was he a safety? Was he a cornerback? and most lean towards safety. Instead, Jacksonville saw him as a cornerback, and he played terrifically. All-rookie team, one of the better young corners in the league in a short amount of time. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. And some room to work. And a big hit at the end of that one. He's knocked down hard. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Hey, hey, right. Let's go. Go. Another carry now for Gore. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. the offense third and eighth Let's go. Grand 38. Grand 38. from the gun here's Brissett out to the flat that's complete to his running back and a loss of three to bring up four that play was well covered just tried to check it down unfortunately not able to find any yardage on that one The 
The Colts send out their punter. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. Great starting field position here for the offense. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. And he's up past the 10 to about the 12. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. See if they stay on the ground for second down. From the gun, it's Manning. And his throw here is incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target. And it's third and four. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. Operating from the gun. Manning. And he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. And they could put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. Here's Brad Nortman now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he's able to get it out of there. He'll take it at the 42. That's a 49-yard punt. Eight, though, on the return. And the Colts are set up well as they take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. And the Colts getting ready to go. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. It's Gore. And now running right through it. And he's brought down. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So the offense has it first and 10. Now a handoff for goal. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, You've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. Yeah. 
Less than a minute to go here in a scoreless first quarter to this point. Brissett now on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. Third down here. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. That's going to set him back five yards. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Brissett sets to throw it. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Barry Church. And he returns it into enemy territory down the 45-yard line. So it's third and long, and you know this is going to be a pass. So defensively, they're bringing an extra defensive back and just blanking the field. And this is an ill-advised throw right here as it winds up being picked off easily. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill out the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Second down following the run. This one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. So we've reached the end of a fairly even first quarter of play. Can't wait to see what the second quarter has in store. More from Jacksonville after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two. They'll need to convert a third and seven, though, to start things out.
Now Leonard Fournette. Heck of a broken tackle, but only able to work this down near the 23. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. They'll lose a yard and it brings up third. One thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick, make a cut, be decisive and go. Because in college, you could dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field, but not on the NFL level. initial move receivers breaking away from the defensive back and that makes it a really tough play to defend a nice chunk of yardage picked up there when you're seeing the option defensively, you got to stick to your assignments. I know that's cliche. They didn't do it there. And option football means exactly what you just talked about. Assignment football for defenders. And that drives them crazy because you have to think your way through a play as opposed to just reacting and making the play. So this drive spans seven plays and it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. The result's not great thus far. A punt on the first drive and an interception last time out. Now let's face it, every team wants to come out on the field and play with some confidence, play with some tempo, play with some rhythm. And when you're making those types of mistakes, you're not getting any of that put together. So what do you say, time to get back to the basics for them? In a lot of ways, yes. But the biggest one, of course, is finding people who will take care of the football and make a few plays. You've got to have a drive now that calms down the entire team. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. And he powers his way up past the 30. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Here we go. A second down throw for Brissett. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And the Jags grab it. The 
the psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. And now out come the Jags. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They begin with a run by Fournette. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. left and he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41 but just four yards on the pickup but that's good enough to extend the drive so many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays but i love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation that's almost a tendency breaker Don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Fournette, and he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back with more from Jacksonville. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. now as I search for my cue card here there we go coming up at halftime Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando he'll have highlights and analysis from our first half of play well read oh, thank you it's already second and 12 the defense hoping to push him back more They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit. It's a gain of maybe three, but it's going to leave him with still about eight or nine to go on third down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Here's Ivory. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. What's that, five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. So on fourth down, Doug Marone going to send out his field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And that's off the right upright, and it bounces away no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. 
always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. And we take some time to spotlight T.Y. Hilton now. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter. They're losing. You got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree. So you have to give them credit. But that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game. Change formations, change where he lines up, put him in motion, anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. First and ten, Brissett. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Jags grab it. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But, hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. The Jags and Leonard Fournette making their way onto the field. He's hoping to get it going. They're hoping to get him going, too. You know, he's about ready to pop one here in the second quarter. He's hoping. And his offensive line teammates... They want to get one of those, too, because they want to continue to run the football. Most offensive linemen like that part of the game better than pass protection because they're not taking blows. Right. They're actually dealing them out. So what they want to do is show the coaches, hey, if we pop one, we're having success. That way they won't go away from the running game. They'll be hoping to pop one, break one here this go around. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much, as he's down to the 48. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. to go in the first half of play. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Offense lining up first and ten. Working from the gun, Manning. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. Second down following the incompletion. <laughs> to throw again, Manning. And now the ball comes out. Manning lost it, and the Colts pick it up. It's a foot race. 30, 10, and he will score. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Huge 
huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. To return it is Corey Grant. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. seconds remaining in quarter number two. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. One final try now for Manning. And that one almost intercepted. Call it a 50-50 ball. It falls incomplete and now third down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. Final shot before break. Manning, he's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven hour score. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. 
What do they have dialed up that will give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Second half beginning with a run from Fournette. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Manning. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Lee. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Manning going to try and throw on third down. And that's complete to Lewis. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. You can hit him underneath now. Yeah, Danny. we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taken with a defensive given. So here we go, first and ten now. the run it's Fournette and he'll push his way up to about the 44 here just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine this is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game it's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people hard to get them started again occasionally Manning to throw on second down. Caught right side. It's Lewis. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and six. Manning now to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. First down, Brissett. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. 
Give him nine there on the first down completion. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on him man-to-man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. Second down, Brissett. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Avery Jones forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz call and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. The Colts on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. Gun Brissett completes it to Moncrief left side. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. The Colts send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is taken at about the 14. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now a play fake here on first down. His throw incomplete. So that pass goes awry, but to make a quick pivot before the game, you and I were going through the list of 1,000-yard receivers this year. Some familiar names, yes, but a couple that are back on the list and then a fresh face. Yeah, you're exactly right. Now, you, men you mentioned guys that we're used to. Antonio Brown, well over 1,000 yards again. No surprise there. Gronk. He gets it done. You know, he, let's face it, he's one of the toughest matchups in the league. But Michael Thomas with the New Orleans Saints, really nice rookie season 2016. He made it legit this year going over 1,000 yards. And then you look at Keenan Allen and DeAndre Hopkins. Welcome back to the 1,000-yard yeah. list for both of them because you expect them to be there each and every year. And finally, they'll welcome to the club an <laughs> undrafted Fielen. free agent from Minnesota State named Adam Thielen. You're exactly right. What a season he's had for the Minnesota Vikings. The Jaguars on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and seven. Shotgun now for Manning. And this is going to be incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Here's Brad Nordman now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And he fields it cleanly. Called out a 46-yard punt, though they did get nine back on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and ten. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. 
They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working and call more of that. Set to throw on first. Over the middle here, it's Hilton. And some big time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Colts on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and seven. Here we go. Right the Throwing. Brissett. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right to kind of play it into their hands. The Colts send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run. 
run it again with Fournette. <laughs> so quick on the spin. Uh, he's spinning, man. And good yardage as he gets this one up to about the 23. A good run as he works his way for nine that time, and it'll leave him with a third and just a few inches. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted three times and eight chances. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. But they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll run with Fournette. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And this defense continues to give them fits. They just can't get really anything going on the ground, can they? I love the theme that you just brought up. This defense has been tough all game long against the run. We just saw another example of it there. They'll go option on second down, right side. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And at this stage in the game, every play is magnified here as we get down to the nitty-gritty. Throwing on first down is Manning. Able to get away. That's why you keep the legs churning. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Manning again here on second and ten. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. They'll wind up getting ten back as that sets him up for third down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. Check 27. Eyes on 27. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And they're facing a big third down now in this tie ball game. through the contact incomplete so now it's fourth down and short and whatever they do run or pass it they've got to pick up the first here yeah and you mentioned running it that is still an option but as you also said they've got to do it quickly and get back to the line of scrimmage tie game fourth quarter and they're going for this thing on fourth down they'll go with a big back for that 
He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. Touchdown, Jaguars! A big play there, 54 yards. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. Hey, that score deserves our respect, deserves our excitement. But I'm looking at the clock, and I'm thinking, there's a long way to go in this one. Ideally, they would have liked to milk a little bit more time off. Now on the other sideline, you start to get the crew together and say, this is what we practiced the two-minute drill for, right? Yeah, you hope you've been in that situation before, and if you have it, you just have the confidence. Hey, let's go down there and get this thing done. But boy, that's a big score right there to give them the advantage. And this one through the uprights and good. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And the finishing touch was that nice long run into the end zone. Lambo out to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he is knocked down from the side. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. time and a Colts first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. He's back to throw. And that's caught inside the 35. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. A big play there for Andy. And even 40 yards. They'll look to throw. His throw caught right around the six. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. First down now, but that clock rolling. He'll look to throw. And it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Now the Colts moving quickly here in the hurry-up offense. Back to throw. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. So getting the big touchdown they needed late in the fourth. Now what do you do? You conservative and just tie it up? No, I think you put your practice into game situation. Go as fast as possible. You already have your play call ready to go. Go for two and decide it right now. And now a critical extra point attempt here. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So that drive spanned five plays. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run.
set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This fielded at the two. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play, but if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. To throw is Manning. Wide open receiver complete. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now Manning. Jumps it off to Fournette. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. This is Fournette, and he's going to be run over, hit hard, as he'll be marked down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, second down. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So now the onus will fall on the shoulders of Josh Lambeau. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So now the onus will fall on the shoulders of Josh Lambeau. Two seconds on the clock, this for the win.
And it's good. He got it. He missed his lone attempt earlier, but he connects when it matters most. And the Jaguars have won the game. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory.